Hey everybody, this is Smoky Mountain Ed. Uh, most people just call me Ed. You can do call me Ed if you wish. Uh, I live in the Great Smoky Mountains, which is uh, the southern end of the Appalachians, which run all the way from North Georgia, uh, clear up to, I'm going to move the camera just a little bit, clear up to uh, northern Maine. Uh, one heck of a hike if you're young enough to do it. I wish I were. Okay. Uh, where I got my origin. Uh, actually, all of us are immigrants. Uh, even uh, the Native Americans, or because they came across the land bridge during the Ice Age from uh, from the Orient. Uh, let me have a sip of my coffee. Now, my grandfather, many, 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 many times removed, was from uh, Wales. My grandmother lived in the Liverpool area. How they got together, I have not the foggiest idea. But somewhere down... I'm sorry, I'm probably going to have to piece this a little bit. Uh, for some reason, the camera quit working a couple spots in this. So, uh, anyway, I was talking about my great, 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 the camera a little bit again. Grandparents. Uh, I don't know how they got together. Anyway, they moved to... Uh, Religious persecution. They had to uh, give up everything they owned, and uh, they sailed from Great Britain to New York. I don't know how long they were there, but they ended up settling in uh, Harbor Creek Township, Erie County, Pennsylvania, which is right on Lake Erie in the Great in the Concord Great Belt. Uh, they built a woolen mill at the beginning of the early 18, 1800s. hundreds. Uh, on Six Mile Creek. It's called Six Mile Creek because it's six miles long from the headwater to Lake Erie. Uh, during the uh, Civil War they were pacifists. Uh, they uh, hid runaway slaves and helped them uh, smuggle down, six, down uh, six Mile Creek to the lake and over to Canada. So don't call me a racist. Uh, Two of my very best friends were black when I lived in Florida. I went to their house and uh, uh, at Christmas time, uh, he, the two of them, uh, and all the three of us were went fishing constantly. So don't ever call me a racist. Uh, when I was a youngster, uh, my mother, uh, <laughs> she. Uh, Never waited and said, wait till your dad gets home. She had a, a metal fly swatter with a handle on it about that long, and I can't tell you the number of times she wrapped that across the back end of my sister and I. Uh, we learned uh, respect at a very young age. Uh, first part of this, I guess, be you may be a redneck and proud of it if you taught your children to say, yes, sir, no, sir, yes, ma'am. Yes, yes, <laughs> no, ma'am. Thank you. Hello, Mr. Smith. Yes, Mr. Smith. No, Mrs. Smith. Yes, Mrs. Smith. No, Mrs. Smith. That is just common courtesy. <coughs> that was Junior. I stepped on his foot. Actually, I smacked him on the nose for being where he's not supposed to be. Okay. Uh, we're going to end this little section, and then we're going to... Uh, I'm on to another section that uh, was cut out and I'm going to have to cut in piece. Oh, it's about, uh, <coughs> anyway, at 18, I left Erie and uh, joined the United States Navy. I got out seven years later in 1965. Uh, the Vietnam War was just starting to heat up. All right, immigration. You may be a redneck if, and proud of it, you believe immigration should be restricted. Now, I am all for legal immigration. I believe that if someone has a job, then they should be able to be moved to the top of the list and brought in. And I also believe if they have a sponsor, they should be able to be brought in. But, well, and of course, all the rest of the people on the list just have to wait their turn and their time, which my parents did. My great grand, my great 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 grandparents. Anyway,
I do believe if you came into this country illegally, and there are so many here that no, it's, it's impossible to deport them all. But any that break the law should be deported, and if they come back, they should serve an automatic 10-year prison sentence and then be deported again. That's what I believe. I'm sorry. I'll probably get a lot of heat over that one. Now, burning the American flag. Now, there was a, uh, an institution of higher learning in, I believe, was Massachusetts, very expensive private school, that uh, recently, I watched it uh, on YouTube, uh, students tear down the flag and burn it. Now, I will say I spent eight years of my life defending their right to do that. But if I were there when they did it, I'd have beaten them to a bloody pulp, at least as much of a bloody pulp as a 76-year-old man can, of course. I may have got my rear end kicked, but then I'd have had one heck of a good time doing it. They just don't realize the hundreds of thousands of men and women that lost their lives so that they have that right to do that. It's just, it's not right. All right, now our, our sitting president, uh, Barack Obama, uh, when he was running for his second term, made a statement that uh, certain parts of the country clung to their church in arms, their church in firearms, yes, church in guns, I think. Excuse me, I think he said. And he's right. We go to church. I have six long rifles, all semi-automatics. I have a 12-gauge shotgun, a semi-automatic. And I have this one, which is a 380. I carry that on my hip everywhere I go, as long as it's legal. If there's a sign on the window or the door, I leave it in the car. Or if it's a government building, it stays in the car. But other than that, it goes with me everywhere I go. Now, I don't have a concealed carry permit, so it has to stay out from underneath my shirt where it can be seen. I will tell you this, that... Uh, and you may be a redneck and approve of this, if anyone, I mean anyone, tries to take them, whether it be the federal government, uh, I don't believe the military would do that because the milita I've been in the military, I know how they feel. They would side with the citizens. Uh, I believe I was talking about the, uh, no one is going to take my guns. No one, and I mean no one, is ever going to harm anyone in my immediate family, whether it be my uh, four furry canine friends or the five cats. <laughs> or any of my personal property. If uh, someone should uh, decide to infringe on my property, uh, take anything that they, they decide to take, they will be shot. And maybe 20 or 30 minutes later, I may call 911 after they bled out, of course. That's only if you're a redneck, you might do that. So we're going to talk about them a little bit. Now, I prefer to call the ones that call me a redneck ignorant eggheads. I'm never allowed to call me a redneck. I can call them an ignorant egghead. Uh, most of them in their lives never, never have been told no. That's a problem. They competed in sports in school. No one was allowed to lose. Everyone got a trophy. Can you imagine that? They're going to get out of school, try to find a job, and compete against 10 other people, or 10,000 other people, and find out that, oh my God, I didn't get it. I want my job. It's not going to happen. Okay, now I'm going to talk about our friends a little bit uh, overseas in Europe. Uh, I still have some family over there that I speak to. I feel very, very sorry for German people, British people. The British people are a little smarter. <laughs> uh, Angela Merkel was a, is a total liberal waste. She should have been outed out of there, but uh, liberals run these countries now. Open borders does not work. I'm certain I'm going to get some really evil, evil comments. Well, at least I hope I get some comments. That's why I served uh, eight years in the service, so they're allowed to say whatever hell it is they want. Uh, I believe that's pretty much I'm going to have to piece in. Uh, at the end of it, I'm going to put in, oh, I'm very proud to be a redneck.
You can call me whatever you want as long as you don't mind me calling you a stupid egghead. Take care, my friends. I'll talk it again another day. Bye.